Thank you for your introduction. Thank you all the colleagues and experts for providing us this platform. I'd like to share with you my recent research. So the title is the uh, high as an alternative modality for patients with uterine fibroids who require fertility sparing treatment. This is a case. This is a case of our first HIFU baby. The patient is 44 years old, and uh, after four years of myomectomy, and a lesion was found in the uterine for three years. So not contraceptive and not pregnant for 10 years. Uh, multiple uterine fibroids was found with a maximum diameter of 66 millimeters uh, plus 79 millimeters and 8 millimeters. And the fibroids for the uterus was found uh, two fingers under the umbilicus. Three months after treatment, she came, out, uh, she came to our uh, hospital for recheck. She told us she did not have menstruation and she was not pregnant for 10 years. After the examination, it's a miracle. 10 years of not pregnancy and 44 years of the senior age. After our high treatment, she embraced spontaneous uh, pregnancy and full-term delivery. And from this patient, we want to know the cause, the reason. We have embraced 100 high food babies. We are glad to see the outcome. We want to know the reasons for the high food babies. What are the mechanisms behind the high food babies? The successful delivery and the uh, pregnancy. So we know that the uterine fibroids is prevalent in China. It exerts a high impact on infertility. Whether the volume is larger than 4 centimeters or below centimeters, 4 centimeters, it uh, has a significant impairment to pregnancy as well as the pregnancy outcome. So what's the cause? There are two major reasons. First, the endometrium and the myometrium impaired blood supply. The endometrium is the soil. If the endometrium is impaired, the blood supply is impaired, that will influence the implantation. Second, impaired endometrial receptivity and gene expression. The 2017 HIFA technology has been included into the expert consensus of the treatment on uterine fibroid. So there is a, a literature. We can see that uh, the average pregnancy time is uh, 5.6 months. On the basis of improving the fertility, it will not improve, increase the obstetric risk. So what's the influence after the high food treatment? And uh, the minimum pregnancy time is one month without the significant change in the fibroid uh, change. And it has increased the birth rate, miscarriage rate, and pregnancy time. We have conducted a meta-analysis. There is a positive influence on all these factors, uh, equals to the influence of the laparoscopic surgery. So we selected the uterine fibroid groups and the non-fibroid groups of 30 women. As for the enrollment of the non-fibroid uh, fibroid group, so they are all women of reproductive age, more than 18 years old, and they have in spontaneous conception and childbirth, no history of an abnormal pregnancy and a childbirth. After the enrollment, we have conducted a self-control research we have conducted HIFO treatments on those patients, and the self-control study was conducted on 30 patients with uterine fibroids. Uh, we have conducted all these parameters. 
After uh, our research, this is a uh, baseline features. And we can see, according to the age, pregnancy, gestation, production, there is no uh, inconsistency between the two groups. And we have conducted Doppler ultrasound to perform uh, the assessment on the hemodynamic parameters of the uterine artery for both groups. We can see for the uh, fibroid group, fibroid group, the PI and RI is less, is worse than the non-fibroid group. We can see the blood flow is influenced. And we have also conducted research or measurements on the thickness of the junctional zone. The abnormality of the junctional zone will influence the contractivity of the uterus impairing the transformation of the sperms and implantation of fetus or embryo. We have recorded the average JZ and maximum JZ, and we can see there is inconsistency between these two groups. Uh, this is our baseline features, the average age is 35.38 plus minus 5.53 years old. And 46.2% of the patients has menorrhagia. 57.7% .7 has dysmenorrhea. And 30.8% of the patients has polyuria or and constipation. And all these 30 patients has fulfilled the treatment. There was no halfway termination of the treatment. There is no uh, complications after the treatment. Uh, three months after half treatment, the reduction rate of the uterine volume was 34.86%. Reduction rate of myoma volume was 49.81%. Obvious reduction in both the uterus and the myoma volume, increasing the life's quality, and it's a safe and effective treatment. And we can see that the uterine artery blood flow parameter of the uterine fibroid group prior and post treatment have changed significantly. Compared with the uh, patients without the uterus fibroid, we can see the results. That compared with non-fibroid groups, the PIRI and SD of the fibroid group after high treatment showed a significant increase in uterine artery blood flow perimeter, returning to the level of the non-fibroid group. That is an exciting finding for us. And for the what, what happens to the JZ thickness, we have also conducted a study on this aspect. The JZ thickness in fibroid group decreased significant after hypho treatment. After hypho treatment, there was no significant difference in the thickness of the JZ between patients with fibroids and those without fibroids, indicating that hypho treatment, the thickness of JZ in fibroid patients can recover to the level of the non-fibroid group. In another words, all the study comes to a conclusion that the ablation rate of HIFO can reach 75.6%. And with a significant decrease of the volume of the my myoma and the uterus volume. And it's more satisfying to find that those patients after treatment, the PI and RF uterine artery was significantly increased and the JZ thickness decreased, suggesting that HIFO may change ER by increasing the blood flow of uterine artery. Improving the receptability of the patients in implantation. This is the same to the traditional Chinese medicine that warm the uterus. Maybe the head plays an important role in improving the blood flow. Other parameters remain uh, unchanged. So we have published a paper 
on this International Journal of Hyperthermia with the support of Mr. Zhang and our team. We hope that in the future, this result can help us and we will continue our study. We hope that we will find the mechanisms behind the improvement. Thank you.